Hello, here at Fletcher Moreland we repair and refurbish a wide range of automation equipment. There's going to be variable speed drives, power supplies, HMI controllers, servo drives and printed circuit boards. Our workshops are open and manned 24 hours a day every single day of the year. Now I'd like to show you a little of our process from diagnosis and repair through to testing of a drive for one of our Norwegian customers to give you an understanding of the processes that we go through and the repair standards and quality that we adhere to. All our repairs are covered by a 12 month warranty and we make sure that we test equipment fully before it's returned to you, ensuring right first time repair and greater reliability. Thank you. More information can be found at www.fletchermoreland.com. Hi Joe, we've Hi. got Carsten Maholt's customer's drive here. Can you tell me what we found wrong with it so far, please? Of course, if I take the, uh, the control card out a second. I take our tracker module. Look at the various sliced modules. We can see as we go down, they look the same. Until we get to this one, the definite difference. Ah, so does that mean there's a problem with that fire ester we found? Yes, we found there's a definite fault with this thyristor module here. And what would we do to repair that? We'd replace the module, we'll check the driver stages, we'll also replace the other two modules alongside it to ensure the customer has ongoing reliability. Ah, okay, so if, with it being a three-phase device we're going to replace all three power devices on that module? That's right, yes. I see you've got the control card from the drive from Carson Marholt in front of you, Joe. Can you tell me what you're looking for now, please? Yes, uh, I'm using our pinpoint system to examine all the integrated circuits on this board. As it happens, I've, I've found a fault now. Uh, if you'd like to see this. The system just going through the tests now on this, uh, this little timer circuit. It's identified straight away. There are two faults on these two pins here, and it's determined we've got an intermittent fault with the card, which would be very difficult to find. That's equipment. So that is testing the chip in circuit at the moment? That's done a full functional test of that chip in circuit, yes. And it's found an intermittent fault, so not a hard fault, a fault that would be a problem in the future? Yes, a fault that may not be seen yet, but may be in its head later. So we would remove that chip and replace it with a known good one? Yes, that's right. Thank you. I see you've now replaced the faulty chip that you found on that board. Can you tell me what you're doing now, please? Yes, I'm using our, our video microscope to examine all the solder joints and tracks on the board to make sure all of them are a high standard. Is there anything else that you do with the board after that? Yes, we replace all the electrolytic capacitors, all the relays and all the optocouplers on this board. Why do we do that? Uh, we found that uh, these are the components that tend to fail um, with age-related problems. So we place them to ensure there's an ongoing reliability of the drive. And then after that, would you then put the drive together and perform final testing? Yes, once I finish this, I'll put the drive back together and we'll put it on our load test rig and load it up to, to full load. Thank you, Joe. No problem. So the drive's now being built up and it's on our test bed. I assume we're going to carry out a test now to see if the drive's operating. Can you tell me what this setup is and what we're going to do, please, Joe? Yes, this is our low power uh, test before we go for the, the high power test. Essentially, what we're doing is we're running the output of the drive into sets of lamps. This particular drive has two uh, critical outputs. One is a thyristor bridge that drives the motor, the second is a smaller thyristor bridge which breaks the motor which is this output here. I've then got a high voltage power supply acting as the taco for the motor. So I can simulate a change in speed of the motor with this power supply. And you can see that if I increase the speed of the motor, the drive now stops accelerating the motor and starts to brake it. And I can adjust it so the drive will actually try and hold and regulate speed between the two, thus testing the functionality of the drive and the speed control loop of the drive. So once you're happy with that test being carried out and everything's operational from the drive, will we then go and perform a load test on this on our load test rig? 
yes, the next stage is to put this drive onto our, our 60 amp load motor and load it up to the full current. We are now in our electromechanical repair workshop and the reason we're in here is because our 400 amp load test rig is housed in here. Just behind me is an orange motor which will be our load motor for the test today and we'll be running the drive up to 60 amps. We're now performing the, the full load test of the motor. At the moment we've got three phase coming into the drive and then the output's going to the orange motor behind me. The motor's running at full speed and at the moment drawing 17 amps. We're now going to increase the load and try and get up to 60 amps. Amps, 18 amps, 19, 55, 60 amps. We'll now leave this drive running at 60 amps for an hour. Right, the drive's now been running for about an hour, uh, and I'm just performing the final test which is using our thermal imaging camera. I'm checking for any hot spots in the drive. Um, and this drive appears to be absolutely fine. So this can go out to the customer. Right, this drive's now ready uh, to be shipped back to our customer in Norway. Um, as we've already told you, we've replaced all the relays, electrolytic capacitors, um, the optocouplers, and the, the failed power blocks. Um, we'll now rebuild it pack it up and it should be tough.